those things where it's like some things are just a better idea on paper than they are like actually, you know? You mean like every book that is better than every movie made? I don't know if that's true. Uh, there are very few books to movies that you can tell me are better in movie form. I mean, I, that's probably true. I think a lot of people would agree with you, but you know, on paper and I like the idea of all machines on earth revolting against man. Like there's something there. Oh, it sounds tremendous. This had so much potential. I had not heard of this movie until you introduced it to me. I think there's a very good reason why you haven't heard of this movie. Sir. <laughs> oh, but there's so many big names around this thing. Not really. It's just Stephen King. Every every name is Stephen King, written by Stephen King, screenplay by Stephen King, directed by Stephen King. I guess that's fair. It's a pretty big name, though. <laughs> Fucking a little less big after this piece of shit. <laughs> you are so grumpy. I, We're going to have to pull <laughs> Cooper out of his, uh, his funk here. You know what? The way I feel this week is the way you felt... Uh, when we watch cocktail yeah you being like when is tom cruise gonna start sleeping with more women is me being like when are the machines gonna start doing more f- cool shit i don't know man i was excited for this and it kind of let me down so i need to apologize to you this week i'm no, sorry Cooper. This wasn't your, uh, this the wasn't machines your didn't do as much awesome killing as we thought they <laughs> would although they have a pretty good kill role maybe we should introduce the movie and ourselves on the sure. podcast here this is bad movies and beer and i'm cooper <laughs> and i'm nolan and Today we are talking about Maximum Overdrive, which is on a ton of lists of like the, you know, worst movies of all time. Just a just a giant bomb, I think. It was terrible. Yes, you're correct. It was it was really awful. Written and directed by Stephen King. Stephen King's very first directorial debut. And only, yeah. <laughs> After this, they're uh, like, no, I'm sorry, Stephen. We had a debate about this before we watched it. I was like, there's got to be more than one Stephen King directed movie because... Someone with the clout of Stephen King has got to have someone else who will let him make a movie. <laughs> and yet here we are fucking 34 years later and it's just not happening. Yeah. They're just like the stench of this one is so bad. <laughs> they're like, no, Stephen, I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. And then we watched a preview afterwards that has him talking oh about God. he had to direct it so that he could do it right. He sells this Stephen in the preview King, like yeah. I was selling cocktail to you. It's going to be great, man. Tom Cruise leaving all these ladies. No, uh, yeah, he's just like, he says he's going to scare the hell out of you. He promises. Yeah, this is promises. not a horror movie. It is a horror movie. <laughs> it's supposed to be a uh, horror movie. It feels like a Transformers movie gone horribly wrong. Like, just Which, so, if you've seen so the Transformers bad. movies, that's really saying something. Yeah, if it's oh, a Transformers yeah. movie that's gone, ra- that's gone this wrong. This is worse than the Transformers Ooh, movies, that's man. for sure. Well, we're going to talk about it anyway. We watched it. And uh, hopefully this beer we're drinking will make this a little more palatable. What do we got today? It's called Live Transmission. Just right along with machines. The whole can is actually covered in what looks like electronics and machinery. So it fits perfect with what we're looking to talk about today. This is from the Flying Monkey Craft Brewery out in Barrie, Ontario. Yep. And this is also a milkshake IPA? Yes. We had one of those the other day, of course, when we Um, watched Can't Stop the Music. I love it when cans have lots of info, and this one does, which is good. It's got brewed with orange peel, grapefruit, soft coconut, and white tea. Huh. So it's got a lot in there, and then they've added those lactose sugars. So that's why it's a milkshake IPA. Right, right. To make it creamy. Yes, you taught me about this a couple weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to give it a, a try here, and we'll see sure, how man. it is. Uh, it's a pretty interesting brewery. I've been and visited. It's, it's a neat place. Okay. I'm hit or miss with these guys. Uh, they have some that I love. Um, their Juicy Ass IPA is one of my favorites. I'm sorry, what now? Yeah, it is a, one of the best names in beer too, the Juicy Ass IPA. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's delicious, but they also have had some that have been just so strong that I couldn't handle it. Yeah, I've had a couple of things from them, and it seems like most of what they're making is geared towards more of a like you know an IPA type guy like yourself. But I feel like they had a... I think it was a sour, maybe it was like a sour ale, and it had... Hibiscus? I've had that one. I'm not a big hibiscus guy, but it had something else. It had some kind of, like, maybe like boysenberry or something. I don't know. Yeah, Um, I think they're not afraid to try things, which I think is commendable. Like, they will put out some pretty, like, challenging beers for people's palates, and I think that's kind of cool that they're willing to go that far. I will say, you're right. The can artwork is incredible. Most of the cans there I've seen have just like really cool artwork and stuff on them. Absolutely. Well, we'll see how this one is. And we'll start with Maximum Overdrive. Produced by Dino De Laurentiis. Oh, what a guy. (laughs) 
<laughs> Dino De Laurentiis has put out some world class shit over the years, and I love him for it. I love him for it. We were trying to debate uh, what Dino looks like and how he lives, and and I just kept picturing uh, the lead character from Scarface. That's <laughs> all I could do. Yeah, although I, guess, I don't know, man. Does Dino are his movies making a lot of money? I assume if he can keep funding these, like I don't know That's where he's probably true. Where yeah. he's getting his money from drugs? I don't know. Oh, no, this what? Is, <laughs> Whoa, those are <laughs> no. This is purely purely allegations. No allegations. Dino De Laurentiis. I know nothing about Dino De Laurentiis. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. yeah. So we start with the view of Earth from space, and we get words in the screen that tell us that the Earth passed into the tail of a comet. Actually, the extraordinarily diffuse tail is what it says. I don't, know, I don't know what that means. Like seven paragraphs popped up on the screen that you had to read as the Earth was there getting covered in this weird green funkiness from a comet. Yeah, it's a comet and they're going to be in the, the Earth will be in the tail of the comet for about eight plus days, eight days, some hours. And we see this kind of green animation encircling the Earth. And then we're on Earth in Wilmington, North Carolina. And the first thing we see is a bank with a like scrolling sign above it a light up sign that says fuck you (laughs) just says fuck you yeah which is pretty hilarious and then right away we have the sighting of the director putting himself in the movie stephen king is the first person we see in this fucking movie (laughs) he walks up to an atm Uh, and uh he's not a good actor let's put it i feel like he's put himself in a ton of the movies he's like written the books for though he shows up a lot on screen doesn't he yes i know he insisted on being in creep show which is a movie that we might watch someday but I, yeah I, he's you know he he's the director he wrote he can put himself in there and he does he goes up to the atm and the atm tells him he's an asshole he uh calls his wife over to take a look at it and he it, by doing so he says come here sugar buns <laughs> honey so, it's calling me an asshole yeah and then we get the titles and acdc is on the soundtrack the whole soundtrack is ACDC. Yeah, this was actually fairly exciting. I was like, this is humorous to have like ACDC be the band of, like that does all of the music for a movie about machines coming to life. Yeah, that's very appropriate. I, I really enjoyed that touch. Like at this point in the movie, I'm really excited. This is happy. Like people are getting told to fuck off by machines. <laughs> it's, yeah, totally. It's a good start. I agree. ACDC is coming in there to sort of get the energy up. And I was like, this is all kind of like making fun of itself. This is going to be really good. We'll see, I guess. <laughs> I think your feelings have been made pretty clear already. All right. Okay. Where do we go from uh, the intro there? We go to a bridge. Yeah. A lift bridge. Lift a lift bridge. I forgot about your fucking extensive knowledge of bridges. <laughs> <sighs> we go to a lift bridge and we see two guys in the bridge control station. They're uh, playing cards. All of a sudden, the bridge controls just activate themselves and the bridge starts going up. And they're just fucking awful actors, first of all. These two guys, they're really, really bad. Oh, it starts off the caliber of acting at the lowest possible level. These guys might be below Stephen King in that first scene. It's a real it's absolutely. A the one gets angry at the other as shit starts to go down, and it might be the worst delivery of lines in a movie we've watched thus far. Um, I'm shut up, you goddamn stupid asshole! Can you see we got a situation here? Yeah, people on the bridge are confused. One, like you know, guy says to his wife, "Oh, it can't be. The light was green. Like there was no. The arms didn't come down to stop anyone from going on the bridge, but it's lifting." We have a motorcycle guy, slow motion, fall into the river, along with a truck that appears to be driven by Fidel Castro. (laughs) Why is he dressed like Castro? (laughs) It was really confusing. The guy falling into the river let out one of those, like, ridiculous screams. He's like, ah! It wasn't quite the full Wilhelm scream, was it? No. no. Close, though? Yeah. Yeah, we've also got a watermelon truck that's just spraying watermelons over the place. There's cars smashing into each other. People are screaming and falling. Then we go from there to a truck with a weird green goblin head on the cab. And it turns out this is actually supposed to be the green goblin. Yeah, I guess so. The toy truck or the toy company is sponsored by Marvel or the green goblin. So they thank them in the credits or something? Yeah, they do. In the credits, I noticed that they thank Marvel and green goblin for that image. There you go. Well, this guy's pulling into a truck stop. The driver goes into a diner to grab a bite to eat where we meet Emilio Estevez. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this was a surprise. Emilio Estevez, the mighty Ducks man himself. He's playing the role of Bill. Bill's working in the diner. And we find out that he is actually on parole. He's on kind of like a work release program. 
his boss calls him into his office and basically tells him that he wants him to work for free, at least squeeze a couple extra hours in, punch in for eight hours, but work for like nine or whatever, because, you know, what's he going to do? Yeah, they're starting to build uh, Billy's sort of character here, and they're trying to show that he's like a hardworking, honest guy, and this other guy's going to take advantage of well, him. Well, we see later, too, when he looks through the thing of punch cards, they all have a little kind of like marking on them, and so that indicates that they are all on parole like all the employees he's basically taking advantage of everybody yeah he's using this like parole to work thing to get some free stuff for himself make some money we see he's driving a cadillac later yeah he's also building an armory of weapons yeah, that's so strange <laughs> he's, he's fucking gleeful about this too like he's so happy you taking advantage of you he's really relishing it as he makes emilio estevez work for free it's a really weird character just like absurdly stereotyped southern rich like fat guy it's weird what confused me was, we think his name is Bubba, yeah. but he calls everyone else Bubba. It's true. I'm pretty sure his name is Bubba Hendershot, and it even says, like, on the shower, it said Bubba Shower, and it had his name all over the Vanity place. Vanity license plate says Bubba, but he calls everyone Bubba. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, it's strange. It's going to start calling everyone Cooper from now on. You should. <laughs> it's like just my, to confuse the my fuck ego out of is everyone. Just so yeah. out of control. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so this, this you mentioned their showers. Yes, this truck's up at shower facilities. They also have a video game room. And we see a little scene in the video game room, the arcade, where all the pinball machines and video games are just going haywire. There's a coffee machine in there. It's like spraying out coffee. There's a candy machine in there. It's just dropping candy bars down to the thing. Yeah. There's a cigarette machine, free cigarettes falling out of there. There's a condom machine just spraying jimmies all over the place. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I miss the condom machine. I was like, oh, yeah. most of the people who are in that arcade probably don't need those. Featuring, featuring uh, such notable brands of condom as Poontang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unfamiliar with that brand, but it's <laughs> oh man, some of the stuff in here, like there were pictures it's of the most yeah. poon hyphen tang. What is this? The pictures on the ads for the condoms were definitely Holy like women Jesus. dressed, women of the night for sure is maybe what we'll say. <laughs> as a, <laughs> oh. uh, so there's a guy in there and he's just fucking cleans up. He fills his pockets with fucking cigarettes and candy and condoms, the three C's <laughs> essentials. <laughs> but then one of the, out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good night, good day. Uh, yeah, man. But one of the arcade games kind of like hypnotizes him and he touches it and gets electrocuted. So a lot of weird stuff's happening. We start seeing more weird stuff. One of the guys at the gas station, one of the attendants goes to pump gas into this truck, but it's not coming out. Then he looks down the barrel of the pump and it just uh, sprays diesel in his eyes. Yeah, it's like he got shot. Yeah, this is one of those moments where they set it up super long beforehand you can tell what's about to happen and you're just like oh don't do it don't look down there you never look into a loaded gun or you never look into <laughs> yeah a i love gas the pump we get the shot like from the point of view of as if someone was inside the gas pump like, yeah looking out through the edge oh my god just yeah. pours in his face and yeah he just he's blind instantly you can't say anything i don't know what would happen if you got diesel in your eyes but i feel like you could wash it out reasonably well i don't know he takes a direct hit i feel yeah. like it, it's gonna hurt for sure maybe he doesn't oversell it i don't know and then more stuff starts happening those for machines. sure we move into the diner, and what happens to our waitress friend? She's just kind of doing her thing, minding her own business, and all of a sudden, an electric carver comes to life and starts cutting her arm. <laughs> Some sketchy yeah. uh, makeup effects oh, there. God, yeah. She like knocks it off the counter. It ends up trying to like cut her feet. Yeah, it's trying to cut through her sneakers. They run in. Emilio Estevez luckily gets it out of the way. They kind of get her clear, and he smashes it with a hammer. It was funny. It was... Just ridiculous to see that one come to life. Some of the things that come to life, some of the machines are like kind of convincing and make sense. And then other stuff is an absolute just baffling fuck show. <laughs> For sure, man. <laughs> For sure. Speaking of which, we uh, see some scenes at a kid's softball game, which they appear to be playing like on a beach. Yeah, this was really confusing. They show a kid hit a home run or like going for a home run. And when he dives to go into home plate, he is literally on a beach volleyball court. There's so much sand on that yeah. infield. That's crazy. But, you know, whatever. He's safe, I guess. They're going to celebrate. Some guy who's either the coach or he's like a... Yeah, he's coach. The coach he? goes to get the kids some pops to celebrate the big win. Yeah, hits up the soda machine. But the soda machine starts spitting out cans. And this was actually great because the first <laughs> one, he fucking just drills him right in the dick and balls. Just like, <laughs> and of course, he crumples. Oh, crumples I mean, him. he crumples immediately. Then and then, logically, the next thing, he takes one in the chest. Yeah, and he goes down a little further. <laughs> And then he eats one right in the face. Now, this one was crazy because the face shot can fucking, like, breaks his skull. And then there's, like, a huge can there's mark a, and a, blood everywhere. <laughs> there's a 
dead in the shape of a can. Oh my god! And then it starts going after the kids on the team when they come oh to my find god. out. The, the kid, the kid looks at him and he sees it and he's like, "Oh my god!" And the kid happens to be the guy who plays catcher. Luckily, he's got his mask with him. He fucking throws the mask on. The thing's launching bob cans and they're bouncing off the catcher mask. This scene, this is where I'm like, this is going to be fucking great. I had high oh. expectations based off this scene. It was really good. It was funny. Uh, we learned that that boy's name is Deke and he, yep. he continues throughout that story. He seems to be the only one who makes it out of this fucking baseball game. Yeah, he fucking runs and he's all right, but one of his teammates gets mowed over by a steamroller, yeah. which is also <laughs> like a pretty good death. Just rolls across. The kid gets his leg caught in a bike and a steamroller just squashes him. Literally. Just yeah. Squash oh. them flat. And so some of these deaths are pretty entertaining at this point. Like, this is good comedy horror. Like, I, I don't know how Stephen King thought this shit was scary when he made it, but maybe it was just, I don't know if it's dated or what it is. Stephen King can write some good horror, so I was confused at why he thought this was going to be like some good horror people. books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but Fair. writing and directing are not the same thing as we are learning from watching this. We cut to a guy who has driving his car he's got a young female hitchhiker in the car turns out he's a bible salesman and kind of a fucking sleaze because he tries to make a move on her he's got the hand on the leg he keeps trying to grope her crotch like continuously yep. going down there she threatens to like cut his hand or hurt him a couple times yeah but you know he keeps going right back there putting the hand back on they hear a radio announcement about things just going crazy she gets him to pull off at the truck stop same one where the rest of us is at and tells him to eat her shorts <laughs> Yeah, I I didn't. Was this pre or post The Simpsons? Pre nineteen eighty six, way before The Simpsons were a thing. So then I guess they The Simpsons takes that line. Well, or we can infer that it's like a it was actually like an expression, oh, like a common expression at the time. That's common fair. enough. Yeah, maybe it was. I've never heard it used in like by a non cartoon character before though. Really fucking strange. Yeah, it was weird. The the toy truck which is being filled up, not a toy truck, but a truck that is carrying toys. Yes. The big truck with the green goblin thing comes to life at this point and tries to run them over. Everyone down there watching is confused, and one of them says, Hell's Bells! So nice little <laughs> ACDC reference right there. Yeah, I wasn't playing, but they do definitely quote. Uh, for some, well, I mean, I guess the woman is good, so she saves him, but like... She saves him for now. Yeah. For she, now. She definitely could have let him go. Yep. We also then see a couple in a car. They're driving along with a just married sign on. They've just been married today. They pull into a different truck stop where they see an arm, bloody arm and a body. The groom follows a blood trail to the store. There's like a spinning hand on a clock, which is supposed to be menacing, I guess. Yeah, and it's going backwards. Time is going backwards. I don't he's know. Like, oh why. my god! Oh my yeah. god! He's so rattled by this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Curtis and Connie here we meet, just newlyweds in love. But she is screaming at him the entire time. She is such a fucking caricature of just like the nagging wife, the wife who won't shut up. It's really like not a good stock character. Like no, why? It was why pretty embarrassing. That? And they chose an actress with like an extremely grating voice intentionally. Yep. I assume. Oh, for sure they did. Yeah. So. A truck kind of pulls around a corner here. He sees it, tries to flag it down to get some help for this dead guy, but he doesn't realize the truck is not being driven by anyone. It's taking control of itself, and it tries to run him down. He manages to get out of the way. He's, you know, okay. The truck starts up again. He jumps in his car and speeds off, and this is where I'm like, huge fucking plot hole. Why isn't, why, why is their car still responding to him? Why isn't their car trying to kill him? There are a lot of problems and a lot of plot holes. Uh, at this point, too, we have our... Maybe it's the second spot of it where we get the point of view of the truck. Mm -hmm. Right, We had it from the gas, and now we get the point of view of the truck as it's trying to like run him down or right after it tries. It's kind of funny. So we see that they have a life of their own. But you're right. Their car's fine, and they can drive it, and it's not a problem. They're driving it for like fucking three hours. Yeah, so I don't understand. It's weird. There's some other discrepancies, too. We have... Uh, that Deke, the boy, riding through town, kind of trying to get uh, away from the things that are, have been hurting him. And we're going to get to this in a bit. And all of a sudden, the sprinklers start going off, kind of like they're chasing him. Yep. Sprinklers aren't mechanical. Well, they're mechanical in a sense. They're not electrical. No, yeah. There's no electricity in those. Like, it, all it is is water that makes it move when it's pushed through. Yeah. But for some reason, I don't know. Lots the, of those issues. Lots yeah. of that stuff starts happening in this movie. And if we take that seriously, it's not very scary or funny. That poor fucking kid, man. He's just seen his coach get murdered. One of his teammates get flattened like a goddamn cartoon character. And now he's riding home. Sprinklers turned on and off. He sees just a ton of dead bodies. <laughs> oh dead God, bodies yeah. all over the place. And then an ice cream truck. Here's an ice cream truck. Normally, kids would fucking run for an ice cream truck. Couldn't wait for it. 
He avoids it. We get a lot of ominous shots of this lawnmower covered in blood. Sure enough, it comes to life, starts chasing him. This poor fucking kid is never going to be able to sleep again for the rest of his life. Yeah, it's it's a mess. Like That poor kid is going to be haunted forever. Now, back at the truck stop, we've got the beginning of a little romantic relationship here. Emilio Estevez kind of checking out like the truck that was carrying the toys with the Green Goblin. Nothing happens to him. It starts starting up. It seems we had a little suspense building. All of a sudden... That lady hitchhiker like grabs him, tells him he's cute. So they're just going to that's there's the romantic relationship. Yeah, right there. It's going to happen, right? He's yep. cute. She's cute, I guess. I don't know. And uh, stuff's going to happen. Also, the guy who ate all that diesel in his face, he's very adamant that he has to get out of the truck stop and find his boy. And we're like, is his boy the softball kid? It, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yep. 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 While he's <laughs> this fucking killed me. Oh, God. He's he got to He's got to I got to find my boy. I got to find my boy. He gets out there. He can't fucking see. He's blind as a bat. He's pulls out his car keys, drops them. And while this is happening, the truck is revving up and just barreling towards him. And even though he can't see, did they say anything about him getting any of the diesel like in his ears? Why can't he hear this fucking truck getting closer? He's he, even moved. He definitely should have heard it both start and start moving towards him. He just stands there lamely. This happens a lot in this movie. I guess when you need like vehicles to be the thing that kills people. People can't run in different directions or dodge <laughs> or do anything, no, right? Man. So he stood there and just gets smoked. But at least he's blind. When this happens later on in the movie, guys just stand there staring at it, screaming yeah. as it runs him over. That makes no sense. He doesn't see it coming. He should fucking hear it, but whatever. So he's dead now. He got run over real good. Then <laughs> the truck also smashes into another truck carrying garbage and dumps a bunch of garbage on the Bible salesman's car. Yeah, I, I think he even described himself as a preacher, and he's got this nice new Cadillac, and he was not okay. No, he ran outside to, like, confront the truck. He yells, you want to rock and roll? <laughs> the truck fucking reverses, and, like, same thing. It's, it's driving towards him, and he does try to run. I'll give him credit, but he runs in a straight fucking line. Yeah. There's a truck. Trucks can't really turn quickly or like no. whatever. Just fucking run three feet to the left, man. No straight line. Truck backs into him, knocks him into like a creek, yeah, or some bushes or something. Knocks him down the ravine. God damn it! Just move to the side. Oh. And this is where the caravan of trucks starts getting go and start honking and revving up and driving around the diner in a very menacing way. Yeah, they're circling the building. We go back to the married couple. They are driving. They also see a lot of trucks heading in kind of the other way, the other direction. And all of a sudden, as they're driving, a giant truck just comes out of like the bushes. It just drives from the side of the road onto the road. I don't know where it was fucking hiding. It was crazy. This giant Mack truck, they narrowly avoid getting hit. And the groom decides to make a comment about shitting his pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that quote was, I think I just loaded my pants. <laughs> they he oh. starts becoming a weird comic relief in this movie i don't know i don't know either yeah. man they got a little chase scene right now the truck is chasing them he manages to like get away from it by turning so if only the bible salesman done that yeah it was smart he actually uses the on and off ramps to get away from a truck which yeah. makes sense his car is still working fine though like you said so no problems with his car I giant don't fucking yeah why is that why is his car working <laughs> fine whatever man know. giant explosion <laughs> That truck's toast, but now they see the sign for the truck stop where everyone else is, and they're going to head there to like find a phone to call the police. Time to go to the Dixie Boy. Right away, we're just there. They get there. They see the circling trucks. His uh, mouthy wife taunts him. Connie, yeah. Yeah. Well, You're what are you going to do it. now? Yeah. He's gearing up to kind of shoot right through a hole in the truck circle. And he pretty much does. And this is, I'm, I've been wrong about so many things in this podcast. <laughs> this is really funny. He just zips through it as uh, I'm like, oh, that was so easy. And then they immediately get clipped and the car flips and fucking like doesn't explode, even though yeah. every other car explodes when it's like it's touched, touched, knocked down, yeah. shot, breathed on. But then Connie gets stuck in the car. Her seatbelt has trapped her. Uh, but luckily, Bill and the sort of hitchhiker lady run out to rescue them. Well, she's running. She's got a straight razor in her boot. Yeah, she's I don't know. Yeah. I guess if you're going to hitchhike, yeah, yeah. you got to be. She's ready to slash a motherfucker if they're messing with her. <laughs> yeah, she threatens it, too. Yeah, Surprise, so... The creature didn't lose a finger. The, tr the trucks are... Uh, the trucks are kind of, like, menacing them, and all of a sudden, Bubba, the boss man... Yeah. ...steps out with a fucking bazooka. <laughs> This was out of nowhere. He's this just is, got a bazooka. This is where we learn this guy has a lot of guns and for no reason. And he starts blowing up trucks. Yeah. We're here and like after he blows them up and they head back inside, we get something that I know is got a, you are going to give a plus one to this movie for it. 
Oh yeah, they're well. They worked the title in right here. This is great. Yeah, Emilio Estevez and the Hitchhiker are flirting, and she said that she had these plans to go down to Florida at least until all the things went into maximum overdrive. And I was like, <laughs> "Yes, sir." Go fist pump for me for that one. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, we see some planes that are flying themselves at this point. One of them seems to be almost kind of chasing the softball kid. Yeah, that was weird. I had hoped maybe it would have been too expensive, but it would have been cool for them to actually incorporate some of those into like explosions or yeah, things. Yeah, the closest we see is one of them is like fucking smashed into a school bus. It's sitting like vertically in a school bus later on. It's kind of a throwaway. Moment yeah, it was there. weird. It's lodged itself. I guess it was cheaper to budget. set that. Got to be than, budget. Yeah, than to actually explode a plane into a school bus. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So back at the truck stop, Emilio Estevez. Stands up to his boss. They find the giant weapon cache. He's trying to put a plan together here. His boss confronts him. He stands up to him. And then Estevez goes for the Oscar with a little monologue about his past and how he ended up in jail. Yeah, it's uh, not very convincing to me. (laughs) Not very convincing to you. He's putting the work in. But immediately after, we transition to post-coitus. Yeah, so whatever, his his intense brooding is opening up a little bit and sharing his past really worked on that hitchhiker because they get down for sure. We also see that the softball kid has actually arrived. He's made it to the truck stop. And this is where I was like, part of me really hopes that he gets scat man right here. <laughs> like he travels. We spent all this time watching him travel there. I hope yeah. he gets him immediately gets run over. That'd be so hilarious. Didn't happen. Uh, no, Didn't I mean, happen. it's hard to cheer for a kid to get murdered in a, in a show. <laughs> but I do agree that the fact that he worked so hard and was so clever up to this point is always interesting when they choose to make that left turn for you in the movie. I just thought it was possible. I'm like, that would be hilarious after investing all that time in his journey. Yes. Post-coitus Estevez and the hitchhiker who, by the way, tells him, You sure make love like a hero. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this was out of nowhere. We just sort of have them in bed together after they've had this thing. And maybe it's like, this might be our last night on earth kind of sex. I I was trying to decide why it was happening. Like, is this the last chance? But she figures out really quickly that the comet is causing some of this and that if they can survive for seven days, they are probably good. She, she knows so much about comets. She's clearly paying attention to current events. Yeah, she listens to a lot of radio and she's hitchhiking. But yeah, they see the green sky and stuff. But I want to go back for a second here because yeah. I asked you this question like a half hour into this movie. And my question was, we know that Emilio Estevez is the hero of this movie because he's Emilio. He's the biggest star. He's Emilio Estevez, yeah. right? But if he wasn't famous. I, I, I said to you, who's the main character in this movie? And you had no fucking idea. Well, no, it jumps around so much between the kid, the married couple, the hitchhiker, other random people, tons of people at this place that you really had no idea. And I, I think that's part of the way that Stephen King writes. Like he is pretty jumpy in the places that he'll travel in his stories, but it didn't work for building a cohesive, like, protagonist that you wanted to follow and hope that they would be successful and win yeah but this is what i'm getting at though because she says he makes love like a hero and i believe a couple of other characters at some point reference him as like they refer to him as hero yeah so it's almost like they're like telling us we haven't set this up story wise but yeah he's the hero we're just gonna tell yeah. you by being like he is the hero like <laughs> yeah sakes. they definitely took the easy way out on that one right they instead of actually building up that he was that person and I guess he's kind of having those moments where he stands up to his boss and this other shit that Well, and like you said, they, they put him as a sympathetic character. He's trying yeah. to be an honest, hardworking guy. He's getting screwed over. Yeah. Anyway, he's got a plan. The plan is he's got a little sailing experience. Let's go jump on a boat. We'll sail to a deserted island. Yeah, we're going to get to this island that doesn't have any technology. People have been there, so there might be some places to stay, but zero technology. And guess what? I used to sail. I can do this, he says. He throws that out there. Yeah. Everyone else, tensions run a little bit high. The waitress loses it, and this is where we get one of the most famous scenes. She... Famous? (laughs) It is. It's one of the famous scenes. It's in all the previews, all the things. I have to say, she is a truly terrible actress. We've seen some bad actresses, but this... She she stalks outside angrily and just keeps yelling, You can't! We made you! Do you We're just some loyalty, you pukey thing! We made you! Oh my god, she's so bad. It's horrible. I don't know what she plans to do, but she's just sort of telling them, they can't be doing this. We created them. I don't know. And then we go back into the diner. Well, she pisses off the trucks. They all start honking at her all of a sudden. They they somehow cut the power to the fucking diner. 
And we get in there, and once the power comes back on, we see the new married couple, and they're definitely doing some hand stuff in a booth. Well, I don't think the... <laughs> 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 yeah, this is... It's, this their, is... it's their night after marriage. <laughs> this is the night they're supposed to consummate, they're, and they're t- uh, <laughs> it hasn't happened because machines have ruined the opportunity. Everyone's trapped in the diner. They're kind of stuck there, the tr- circling trucks, and you know they're playing cards and they're just having conversations people are getting drunk and sure enough yeah the groom is like and his wife under like a jacket like high school movie theater style yeah, just exactly like, right <laughs> inside the theater and she's oh. laughing like it's the funniest thing in the world maybe she's ticklish <laughs> Know, she clearly is or maybe he's doing it wrong if it's oh, their first time God. i don't know <laughs> yeah oh now someone theorizes that <laughs> the trucks are like running out of gas the hitchhiker says to Emilio Estevez, maybe tomorrow it'll be our world again and he in a moment of true insight is just like was it ever <laughs> what, is, what is this bullshit deepness? Yeah, I don't know where that came from. Come on, man. It was never ours. The machines always ruled the world. They're definitely trying to... I mean, that's the point of the story is that we're too dependent on machines. Oh, and- this movie is a Mennonite's wet dream. <laughs> It's just that we are just. No, I shouldn't. Uh, I, I think shouldn't. You're right. I shouldn't. No, I shouldn't alienate our Mennonite listeners because uh, they listen to oh, yeah, a lot of podcasts. podcasts. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they can't uh, listen to podcasts. They probably do now. We're sorry, Mennonites. Oh, I am sorry. Um, so yeah, it's so weird. I don't know. I I'd be interested to see because the technology at the time was oh. so shit. Like in the movie, there there's not that much technology. I wonder how this would play out today. Like it, it kind of reminded me of the way I was thinking about that computer in uh Oh, Dungeon Master. Dungeon Master, yeah. So the computer in that is so jokingly horrible and old, and so is the technology in this. I wonder if they remade this movie today or like took a modern well, twist it would, on it. It would be the computers that go crazy. That's what it yeah, would be. I guess so it would basically it'd be, be cell phones and computers yeah, just AI the rise of launching nukes. Yeah. 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 Which would be which has been made like Terminator movies are basically yeah, like that's that. All that stuff, There's yeah. much better versions of this movie yes, out there absolutely. if you wanna if you wanna find them. So the Bible salesman, it turns out, still alive. Yeah, our reverend, I think, or whatever. Uh, He's calling for help. Yeah, from that ditch he got plowed into, they can hear him, but really not many people want to go give that guy a hand. No, it's just Emilio Estevez because he's a hero, makes love like one anyway, and the groom because he's like a decent human being. Yeah. Or he just wants to get away from his wife. She won't fucking shut up she's just like <laughs> she's nattering at him the he, whole time he thought a terrible character would like put her to sleep or something but it didn't happen so oh christ <laughs> can't get away from it <laughs> so they have this plan they know they can't <laughs> run across but they might be able to get it through if they can get into the fucking sewers yeah there's through the shower facilities that are there yeah. advertised on the sign so Emilio Estevez and the groom, they manage to run through the truck circle, make it to the shower facilities. They kind of rope their way down into the sewer using like a thick fucking like high school gym climbing rope, yeah. as you called it. I think it's probably used for towing, but that's definitely what it reminded me of. It even had the end burned off like one of those, so it doesn't unravel. Yeah. And as they're doing this, by the way, we get, for those about to rock, we salute you on the <laughs> ACDC soundtrack. Yes. Because they're about to rock and they get in there. They end up creeping through like... It's like a wood paneled sewer. This was so strange. Yeah, it was for some reason the sewer that was created underneath the showers that lets the water out into the culvert is all made of wood. It's like an old mine shaft almost. Yeah, it was weird. So they crawl through there. There's some really bad jokes about how it tastes and how much piss is in their mouth and stuff. Yeah, there's a rat there and Estevez is like, I'm going to send you a friend. Yeah, it's horrible dialogue and acting throughout that process. It's really bad. Yeah. It felt like a padding scene to me. Yep. The softball kid actually finds the Bible salesman first, and he's clearly dead. He's not moving. His eyes are open. Kid checks him for breathing. All of a sudden, salesman comes right back to life. I don't know jump why he couldn't. Scare. Yeah, yeah. I called this one. Yeah, I saw it coming. I was like, they're definitely setting up a jump scare in this poor kid. And that was the closest thing to a scare in this whole movie. Yeah, it wasn't scary either. Think? Yeah, it was awful. It's not a scary movie at all. Like this is a supposed to be a funny ass movie that Stephen King promised falls flat. Oh, he, he promised he us, did, which is upsetting. he lied. Shame on you, Steven. So this like Bible salesman, reverend guy or whatever he's called, comes back to life and grabs the kid. But instead of being like, he does ask for help, but really he's like, I'm going to kill you if you don't get me out of this pit. And I was like, what the 
fuck? Like you're gonna take a kid down with you because you're about to go down? The kid's like, I, I'm a child. I can't drag you. You're too heavy. And he's like, I will murder you. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. oh my god. So by the time Emilio Estevez and the groom get there, he actually is dead. Like by that time, he's expired. This must be his last kind yeah. of dying breath. Was Imagine to cuss your out last a child. dying breath. Yeah, as a Bible salesman is to threaten a we child's life. We know he's not a good guy, though. We saw that yeah. with the constant oh, sexual okay. assaults. Um, Comment on religion from Stephen King, I guess. I don't know. I guess. So it uh, turns out that this kid is the son son of the guy who ate all the diesel. And uh. that means that when they get back inside, it's time for an uncomfortable conversation. Unless you're Bubba, in which case he's just like, yeah, your dad got mowed down by one of those trucks. Tough break, kid. <laughs> He literally says tough break, <laughs> He kid. says tough break, kid. This is not okay with the hitchhiker. She is like, come on, manners, dude, and comes up and slaps Bubba, which Good. he deserved. Yeah. yeah. And the next morning is very quiet, but we see reinforcements coming for the trucks. There's a bulldozer and some kind of like army vehicle with a machine gun on it. Yeah. So at this point, like I'm ranting to you about not understanding why the trucks have not driven through the fucking truck shop like the i don't know why they are just letting those people sit in there if they're going to mow them down when they're out on the road or in the open like why aren't you driving your trucks through this fucking thing yet that is the biggest plot hole in this movie those trucks could smash through there's fucking like 19 trucks you could smash that building from every angle kill every human inside and they just don't and then the bulldozers come in so i'm like okay maybe they're deciding that those trucks would break and they don't want to explode them so they're going to use this bulldozer here it comes well, all it does is it pushes Bubba's Cadillac into the diner, and he is pissed off. He's had enough. So he loads up the bazooka, heads outside, blows up the bulldozer. But as soon as he does, the machine gun on the military uh, thing starts spraying bullets. And I love this. This is such a fucking budget thing. We don't see any squib effects. It's just gunshots. Then we cut back to the person who's all covered in bloody bullet holes being like, ugh, and like falling. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. So we see Bubba just fall with all those things on him that... Asshole's dead, which is good. We're kind of not so upset about that death. And then all of a sudden, a lot of the drunks from the diner, the ones who were just getting loaded, they don't really play a part in the movie, but they get smoked by it too. Everyone else important stays okay. Well, but then the waitress, the dust kind of settles, and that waitress, she just fucking snaps again. She once again walks outside shouting, we made you, we made you. This time she brings a bazooka with her because she's going to take them all down. Yeah, but instead she just gets immediately shot. Now she gets squib effect, so that's good. Yeah, actually that was pretty good. That was nice. And then the bazooka goes off as she's dying and blows up a... Miller truck. There was a a couple tears running down your face. So unnecessary. I know. But yeah, that happens. And all of a sudden, the Jeep, the military vehicle, starts honking. And someone recognizes that it's honking in Morse code. And what it's honking out are its demands. It's actually the kid who recognizes too, right? Of course, he was it's, a Boy Scout or something? De- or yeah. Some kind of, yeah. Well, that's how come I recognized it too. I had to learn Morse code for that. But Estevez kid. translates. No? No, the kid does the translation. Oh. The kid sits down with a pen and writes it all out because it was moving too fast for him. And he translates for everyone. And basically... Those trucks want to be refilled or they're going to kill everybody. Yeah, someone must pump gas or else everyone's going to die. So Emilio Estevez, again, taking charge, decides he's going to go turn in the pumps. And then he says, I just hope none of them left home without their American Express cards. (laughs) (laughs) And this is the point where I was like, maybe Stephen King should stick to books, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was really bad. Even the actors and people around him couldn't laugh at that piece of shit joke. Yeah. Yeah. It was awful. It's yeah. rough. But you know what? Say this for Estevez. He committed to this. He was like, yeah. I'm not just going to come here and catch a paycheck. I'm going to do I'm going to do what the director wants. Um, and then we have about 10 minutes of scenes showing us how gas stations work. <laughs> 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 just fucking yeah, pumping gas. And then the gas oh, runs God. out. And then they show us how to refill a gas station. Yeah, we just we get hours of hot pumping. And for some reason, temperature pump, hot. Pumping gas <laughs> the entire day exhaust the shit out of these people gotta be heat stroke that's the only thing i can think of like they are all on the verge of death or at oh, least fuck, that's how it's staggering portrayed. around like yeah. they've been like in a war and all they did was sit there and pump gas i mean that's got to be hot and not very fun like boring as fuck but don't they have don't they have one of those like shade casting roof things yeah. over the pumps Absolutely we see that right do. yeah i'm yeah. not crazy but they're yeah. all just fucking dropping like flies estevez is like fucking he's, he's like incoherent yeah it's it doesn't make a lot of sense i don't understand what steven was deciding to do here i mean a lot of what's happened has gone off the rails in this movie at this point well yeah that's that's exactly right emilio estevez is 
lady friend cleans him up a little bit. Someone has to escort him inside for it to basically carry him inside. He's got giant blisters in his hands from pumping all day long. <laughs> so she's telling him off. He's oh rambling God. about like, I don't even know the fuck what. I couldn't I just, understand yeah. what was happening. I didn't understand a word he said during this that ramble. second Oscar clip. He's just yeah. fucking, it's like a whisper monologue about who the fuck knows. Next day though, he's refreshed and rejuvenated and he's got a plan. He grenades the like gun Jeep thing and then everyone's going back through the sewers. And this is the point where the trucks finally figure out that they can just smash into the building and they all just start doing it. It was ridiculous. So as soon as everyone's escaped and crawled through the sewers out to the culvert, trucks start demolishing the place. Nobody left in there, right? And then we're going to have our backcountry trek towards the marina, right? They're going for yeah. the boats. If those trucks had just done that 20 minutes earlier, everyone would be dead. I mean, no. we, we wouldn't have had a movie. But we, no, we would have had a movie. A good one. A better one, probably. It just would have been like 75 minutes long instead of like 100 minutes long. <laughs> yeah, but we're off to the marina. They've got a sign that shows it is one mile away. As they are heading there, they, for some reason, like pause in the parking lot of a fucking burger place. And the drive through ordering uh, speaker sees them and starts fucking squawking off. Humans here. Humans here. Humans here. Yeah, and who's going to take care of this fucking mess? The fucking kid. The softball kid <laughs> mows down this fucking drive through window. Yeah, an 11-year-old, they hand him the fucking automatic weapon, and he just melts it. I want to go back a sec to when they run over the Dixie gas station. This must have been fun to film. Like, they actually trash this gas station with the trucks and the bulldozer, and then they put in a, like, fuel tank and explode the whole thing i think they probably had a lot of fun actually making that scene that's got to be where most of the budget went i, I think so it was fairly yeah. con- like entertaining and convincing why it didn't happen when it should have is the most infuriating thing about the movie probably but uh, very much so yes yeah. yes definitely so, so sorry we go back to the kid destroying the fast food machine or the sort yeah of, what speaking to the ice cream truck from earlier i guess has heard the call from this drive through fucking oh speaker God. and so it's now barreling down and they I, just, I, they shoot, I started they, swearing at the television yeah. at this point, like repeatedly. One of the most infuriating things to me in movies is when they shoot a vehicle and it explodes. Immediately explodes. Just oh my right God. away. Giant fucking explosion. We've seen that a few times. And yeah, it happens all like, like two bullets. Boom. The yeah. whole big car explodes. And it just flips and there's fire everywhere. And I was just so angry. I was like, good. The menacing truck is gone. But I don't know. No, it's <laughs> I'm so upset. You're upset with the yeah. science behind it. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I so, want a Mythbusters about this, please. There probably is one. If there is, please comment and let me know. Yeah, there Send should the be. Link. There you go. They make it to the marina, but one of the guys there gets distracted by robbing a corpse. Yeah, there's a woman who's been like suffocated by her window. Obviously, it which had, why couldn't we see that death? Yeah, that was a been cool a good death. One. The, the automatic window keeps coming up, and she's getting more and more frantic. She That'd be a great one. Show us that one on camera. They should have. Uh, but she has a giant diamond ring, and her arms out that window. So his name is Brad. I don't know why. I know that, but that's Brad, the first time we hear it. Someone's like, "Where's yeah, Brad?" Yeah, Brad's he's robbing there, that corpse. Robbing the corpse, and guess what shows up? Green Goblin truck. Yes. Truck carrying the toys. It drives straight at him. Brad just stands there, he's screaming, and gets just run over. <laughs> he goes right in the Green Goblin's mouth as yep. if his corpse explodes. Every time someone gets hit by a truck, too, it's just like blood everywhere. I don't know what it would look like. That's but what it would look like. Yeah, Those okay. trucks are fucking big, man. Yeah, it's going fast. So. It would destroy a human yeah, being. It's true. So that was a pretty nice, messy Green Goblin style death. Who shows up, though, to stop Estevez. this motherfucker? He's the hero. Yeah. He literally steps out with the bazooka and like bazookas it to a chorus of cheers. And as he does, he says... Adios, motherfucker. <laughs> this is a big moment. <laughs> oh, my God. I know that the like the rocket goes right into the mouth of the Green Goblin. It does. And yeah. that's kind of funny. The lo- eyes light up, and it starts on fire, and then all of a sudden, the whole thing explodes. Yeah, that's a nice touch, actually. Yeah. And then they're off. They're on the boat, and they're heading for the island. But I have several questions. Like, do they have food? You pointed it out. He couldn't undo the knot. The tie the a, boat. There's a fucking standard, like, knot. He yeah. can't even untie it. So he just gets the, uh, the hitchhiker's straight razor to cut through the fucking rope. You so cut the rope every time you got to untie the boat. sailor is this guy? These people are fucked. Pretty sure knots are, like, the first thing they teach you. Yeah. You can't get on the boat so you can tie a knot. Well, so he has no sailing experience, it seems. They have no food. And they're about to go sail off to a an abandoned island. And there's still, what, like six or seven days of machines controlling the world? Yes. Well, we get a just an incredible postscript where up on the screen, all of a sudden, 
we get a, a little message that two days after this, a Russian weather satellite that for some reason is armed with lasers and class four nuclear missiles destroyed a UFO in Earth's orbit. Where the fuck did this come from? So what is this? <laughs> UFOs? Did they run out of money? Like, why did it not end? Is this how the end of, like, if Stephen King wrote this, is this a book? If he wrote it as a book. We were going to film it and we just couldn't figure out a way to do it? Yeah, like, why? I guess. Like, it started with this stupid script and it's ending with another, like, 10 paragraph thing up on the screen. They tacked on what would be the most exciting part of the movie. Yeah, I don't understand. And was it the UFO then that was making all of these come to life? Or was it the still the meteor? We don't know. I don't know either. Any, why, why wouldn't the satellite be affected? I don't know. Is it just stuff on the planet? I guess. I don't know. This makes no fucking sense. Well, no. There's so many problems and plot holes with this shit. We actually get a little addition to the script on the screen. It says the survivors of the Dixie Boy are still survivors. And as we fade out, we get a little footage of the boat drifting off and the bride, Connie. Yeah. She's seasick. You know yeah. I get seasick. She's just, again, nagging her husband. Talking just about like, her cookies. Fuck, throwing man, her what her. an yeah, awful like, oh my God. stock character. Ugh. And then we get the credits set to the tune of You Shook Me All Night Long. ACDC well, plays least, the hits. At least they're ending and starting strong. We do. The soundtrack was good. It was just ACDC's greatest hits is all it was. They were just like, yeah, put this here, put this there. Which was Close fun. With all, fun with that. Long. There were some pretty bad sound cues on stuff. I don't know if it was their responsibility or somebody else. I don't know, dude. They, like The choices in this... I can see why Stephen King was never again allowed to direct anything. And I am fine with it for the record. <laughs> I am great with it. Stick to books, Stephen. Stick to books. Oh, God. It was so promising. This is like cocktail again. So many of these movies sound like they're going to be wonderful. Just can't get across the finish line. And yeah, started and hot, it did start out. hot too. I know. When are we going to get a movie that starts hot and doesn't burn itself out till the Very end? Very soon. If I had to guess, I'd say probably in the next two weeks. All right. I'm excited for that. <laughs> I'm really excited. I hope so. Me uh, too, man. I hope so too. All right. So what are we going to rate this thing as? So if you've never listened before, I don't know why you'd be you listening to episode this, 14 first. Maybe but welcome. you really love Stephen King. We appreciate you yeah, coming. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. We rate this twice. Two different scales of 1 to 10. We'll do it 1 to 10 for how bad the movie is. And then we'll do 1 to 10 for how enjoyable the movie is. And the goal is to get a movie that is 10 on both scales. Or as we know it, Crit 20. And I will tell you right now, I'm putting it in play because in my opinion, this movie is 10 out of 10 bad. You're right. 10 out of 10 bad. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's immediately it. Yeah. No, there is no debating that it is a 10 out of 10 bad. The acting's a goddamn travesty. It's awful. There's so many inconsistencies in the machines and Giant how they're working and what's happening. Movie makes no sense. Dialo- the, the dialogue is awful. Awful. There's nothing scary about it. Not even a little bit. The, old, no. the jump scare was the only time where I'm like, this will be the biggest scare in this movie. And it was, but it still wasn't scary. And it was 100% predictable. Nobody who has seen a horror movie in their entire life would be scared by that moment. Yeah. This is really bad. It was awful. And again, so promising. It started out promising. So everyone who had that on their list for awful movies, you're right. It, it's real bad. It's you are, Those shit. lists were accurate. Yes. 10 out of 10 bad. How much did you enjoy it, though, on a scale of 1 to 10? The idea is awesome. It's a cool idea. It actually starts out pretty fun. I like the ACDC intro. I like some of the clever stuff there. I like when it was making fun of itself with Stephen King and the fuck you and the asshole stuff. You're an asshole, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I enjoyed the coach taking it pretty bad and the sports team. And some of the death scenes there are pretty funny. But once we get past the first 20 minutes where they're introducing the idea, the whole thing goes downhill like a garbage dumpster fire. Like that is <laughs> where we're at. So I don't know. If it was only that little bit, it would have been good. But because they maybe sit through the entire thing, like I, I think the enjoyability is a six. Wow, you're more generous than me. I'm giving it a five. Wow, okay. Yeah. Other than the 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 pop can machine is the best thing in this movie. That dude is going like one to the dick, one to the chest, one to the head. <laughs> and then the catcher, the uh, catcher mask, yeah. and the kid is like immune to the pop cans. Yeah. Like that that to me was really funny. I like that. Um, and yeah, the starting and it just, it, it fucking dropped like that biker off the bridge when they opened the bridge. Yeah. Just fell, fell in the river. So yeah, I mean, I'm glad I watched it for the cheesy factor and to say that I've seen it. I think I'm going to pull a you here and say, I'm probably not ever going to watch this again. Well, no, no, not are you. Are you going to, yeah, no, absolutely. you're not. No, what? never. Uh, I'm stunned. Well, there's no chance. Don't waste your time. Don't watch it. 
<laughs> wow, this is, yeah. I mean, no. If if you've never seen it, uh, listen to the podcast while you watch it, so you can uh, yeah, something man, with us. Uh, hopefully, know. some good comes out of this fucking piece of shit movie. <laughs> Real bad. All right, how about the beer though? I oh, I didn't really like it. It's not awful. Like I'm drinking, I'm not really struggling. But it's I think I think what it is is the combination of flavors is not really doing it for me. This tastes kind of like. I'm sure at one point in my life I've eaten like a spiced cake with like orange rind or something. That's what this tastes like to me. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of flavor. Looking at their can now, they have uh, the statement on here that normal is weird. And I think that's definitely a calling card of uh, Flying Monkey. They like to definitely throw out some strong and strange flavors. I actually have enjoyed it. Um, I like the white tea and coconut flavor. I do agree the like orange peel or rind flavors are pretty predominant in it. Um, I think it's something that I would drink as like a dessert beer or a one of kind of thing and enjoy. I couldn't crush a whole bunch of these. It's certainly not sessionable. But Yeah, no, I think and that's like, you know, I mentioned it reminds me of a dessert that I'm sure I've had. So I'm sure there like a lot of people would enjoy this like this flavor, this combination of flavors for me. It's just not I'm not a big orange guy to begin with. And kind of with the spice, it's just not a great mix for me. But that's fair. Yeah, definitely. We're checking it out. Live transmission from Fly Monkey or try out some of the other ones. Juicy Ass is definitely a recommendation. You'll be able to spot the cans because their their cans have quite uh, imaginative designs. Yeah, they're cool. Eclectic sort of art on them. All right. There you go. So that'll wrap it up for Maximum Overdrive. Next week, even though we've already watched an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, you can't go wrong with more Arnold. We're going to be watching... <laughs> Conan the Destroyer, a little sword and sorcery, mix it up a little bit. Ooh, that sounds good. Uh, I do love that style of movie. I haven't seen the original, so this show oh, should be... Oh, what? I know. Oh, uh, man. Uh, I mean, I don't remember it, maybe as a kid, but I definitely don't remember it at all. Uh, if people want to give us some feedback or see what's coming up, how do they... Yeah, so Twitter and Instagram, at the BMB Podcast. We would love it if you checked us out, followed, liked, shared, subscribe. Um, if you have movie recommendations... Uh, you can get a hold of us at the BMB podcast at gmail.com. Please send beer and or movie recommendations. Absolutely. And we thank you so much for listening. I'm Cooper. I'm Nolan. And we'll see you next time on Bad Movies and Beer. Keep it trucky. Maximum Terror. Maximum King. Maximum Overdrive.